the violent arrest of six unarmed black teens in Ocean City once again raising questions about policing in Maryland, once again fueling new calls for better training and restraint. BNC's Tashani Whitlow details these incidents and a warning, the video that you're about to see is disturbing. A teenager vaping, leading to this chaotic and shocking scene. You see an Ocean City, Maryland police officer kneeing a teenager multiple times in his side. According to Ocean City Police, officers were enforcing the town's smoking ordinance on the boardwalk when 19-year-old Brian Everett Anderson from Pennsylvania allegedly refused to stop vaping and show ID. Police say he then became disorderly. The video recorded by a bystander begins there. When Anderson says he told police he wasn't resisting arrest, Another teen appears to be tased during the scuffle, while authorities say a third member of the group threw a bike at them. I get a bike thrown at me, so I grabbed the bike and threw it to the side. The incident ended in arrests for an infraction that normally carries up to a $500 fine. Ocean City Mayor saying in a statement, it was only after the individuals refused to provide identification that this became an arrestable offense. Adding the officer's actions are under investigation. Governor Larry Hogan calling it a disturbing video. We're just anxious to get uh, the initial investigation conducted so we can have all the facts. It's not the only incident in the city being called into question. Another video showing the moment 18-year-old Tajir Griffin was tased. Ocean City police say they stopped the teenager for smoking violation and used the taser after he allegedly threatened to kill officers. He was not resisting. He was not giving any issues to the police officers. The events combined causing outrage from some of the state's delegation. The state speaker tweeting, Vaping on the boardwalk is not a criminal offense. Black and brown children should not be tased while their hands are up. Officers should not kneel on the back of a minor. Vaping should not yield a hog tie. Tashani, thank you very much. Billy Murphy is the attorney of one of the young men who was arrested by the police. Billy, good to see you this morning. What are nice they telling you, you happened? Well, they're being very tight-lipped in, in official capacity. They have a spokesperson who's been dealing with the press. Uh, but since we are now representing them in the criminal charge, they have certain discovery uh, obligations to us, meaning there's certain information that they're compelled to turn over to us. They have not yet done that. And so we're not in a position really to understand what their official uh, prosecutorial position is. We know from a spokesperson uh, that they're in complete denial about anything improper going on. For those of you outside of Washington and Baltimore that don't know Billy Murphy, he has made a living out of videotapes like this and taking on police departments. And, and I guess the question that I find myself asking Billy is, when you see this video and you see the officers kneeing him in the back over and over again, your, your, your client uh, being Brian in this case, are there two incidents? One is the actual arrest itself, and the other is what happened after he was on the ground? Well, I think that they're a unity, uh, and we're going to find out uh, that I believe that the police have been making false statements about what's going on to the extent that there is video footage uh, available about what led up to this. Uh, so we are not convinced that the county is being straight with us. We're not convinced that the police department is being, is being straight with us. And certainly the kneeing, uh, just as one example, is inexcusable. Uh, there isn't anything in any training manual anywhere for any police department that says that you can knee a suspect in custody as viciously uh, at, or at all, uh, like we saw in that film. Uh, the, it, concerning the tasing, the man had his hands up in the air. He was being compliant. There's no excuse for tasing somebody under those circumstances. I'm gonna show our audience that, that video one more time of, of the tasing incident. And I wanna warn them, it is graphic. Uh, this, is, this is the kneeing, it too is graphic. Uh, and as we are looking at these two pieces of video, a question, Billy, is there a larger issue here? Because why are we not seeing these videos surface of young white teens 
being arrested in Ocean City, Maryland. Also, if you remember earlier, we saw the skirmishes in Florida. Do you think that this is about uh, vaping or do you think this is about keep a, our America's beaches white again? Well, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. Let, let's, let's back up for a minute. Many of these officers are temporary police officers who've been uh, pressed into service uh, with questionable amounts of training uh, uh, because it's beach season. Uh, during the non-beach season, uh, the Ocean City Police Force is much smaller. So these are temporary police officers. And whenever you have temporary police officers, you have training issues that are transcendental, uh, training issues that may eclipse what we are seeing in terms of them being problematic. Uh, and uh, that's part of it. The second part of it is that the Eastern Shore has long history of racism. Uh, it has been separated significantly from the Baltimore uh, mainland. Uh, and uh, the customs and mores of the Eastern Shore have always been a lot different towards black folks than any other part of the state. And so when you have a history of racism, you have a history of exclusion, and you have young white people growing up in racist households where they are learning it from mothers and fathers, that is a, the prototypical problem we see around the United States, especially in those areas that uh, were for the Confederacy during the Civil War. And so you've got to root these people out. You've got to have a screening mechanism so that even though you're bringing in temporary people, they get properly trained and they get properly screened so that racists are not permitted on the force. And, and I will echo what you're saying about the Eastern Shore of Maryland. The first riots in the United States, of course, took place in Cambridge, Maryland. But that being said, after George Floyd, how much of this falls on the city leadership to make sure that the officers that they put out there on the streets don't do things like we see them doing on this videotape? Well, you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, leadership is everything. And when the leadership as its first response is denial of any impropriety, that doesn't give anybody confidence that they're going to tell the truth. And uh, it gives the contrary impression, and that is that they're going to defend this misconduct by the police uh, all the way down the line. And so wiser heads have to step in and say, is this really what you want to do? Don't you understand the long-term consequences of that? Uh, don't you understand that that will increase hostilities? Don't you understand that it could cut substantially into tourist dollars, uh, et cetera, et cetera? And so that conversation has to take place. And we're ready, willing, and able to have that conversation.